Hey everyone, this is Lucky70x. Welcome to a brand new Let's Play. You can briefly see the title there for a moment. From Ubisoft and Genkai. Genki. However the hell you say it. I probably don't know. People are going to hate me for it. But that's okay. Welcome to a PS2 game. Because I'm doing console games suddenly. Very fun one. Known as Jay Cocoon 2. I'm just going to go ahead and say right now. I've never played Jay Cocoon 1 by the way. This is just sort of a game I picked up randomly as a kid. And I like this game a lot. It's a very niche, underrated game that probably none of you have heard of. Well, I'm sure some of you have, but not many have heard of. And I decided I'm going to go ahead and play this one, because let's face it, if I do console games, I'm probably going to do a lot of niche ones as well, because it's kind of what I like to do. So, I figure I'd start with this game, and we'll go from there and see what happens. So, a very fun game. Um, I guess I'll just go ahead and use this opportunity to give like a recap of the plot, so you guys don't have to pay too much attention to the text here. Um, because basically it does, it is kind of a continuation of Jake Kuhn 1, although the way the game is played is very different from what I've heard. The battle, the battle system is really different, and, and so on and so forth. So it's kind of like a, it's not, it's not one of those sequels that keeps the gameplay the same. But basically, Jake Kuhn 1, boy, he steals a bunch of things in the world, a bunch of monsters in the Wormhole Forest. And, uh, Jake Kuhn 2, we go back to the Wormhole Forest to hunt the beast down because they, um, there's apparently a darkness called Kama growing in the forest, and, uh, we need to, and we're going to be a one boy who goes to join the Beast Hunters and hunt them down. Using monster battles and some really interesting things. It's basically sort of very uh, Pokemon-ish, except in a more tribal atmosphere. And the battle system really isn't like Pokemon at all. But that's okay. You'll see, it's just one of those games that will be more obvious as we go through and explain stuff. But I'm going to start a new game, and then I'm going to shut up because we have voice acting. This is Nico. My name's Nico. I just said that. I'm a fairy from the dream world. It's somewhere between, you know, heaven and earth. Anyway, you ever heard the story of Jay Cocoon? Monsters wander through the forest. And people live in fear of them hiding in magical protection. That age is said to have lasted a long time. Yet that entire pack of monsters is said to have been sealed in the wormhole forest by the brave actions of a single hunter. So, pretty amazing, huh? Time passed and the saga faded to legend. And after a long period of silence, the seal was finally about to be broken. But, however... Time to assemble has come again. Save the world from the beasts of darkness. This recent Help Wanted ad stirred up the public by advertising, make a quick buck in all the rank and honor you want. Come on out, starting today, you too can be a hero. Yeah, magic and monsters. No matter how much you know about them, you still won't be popular with the girls. Much less attract them. Hey, rude. Ta-da! This is the brave hero of our story. His name is Kahoo. He's a perfectly normal little boy who adores the legendary Cocoon Master. You call that normal? Well, we won't worry about that now. Thus, Kahoo begins his journey and heads to the temple to meet his hero. So I wonder, what will be young Kahoo's fate? So, that is sort of our little intro story. That's Nico. She'll be important later, but, uh, for now, we're going to be Kahu, namely Ooh, the protagonist of the story. I into a room. Is this the power of magic, too? Magic! Hmm, this place is pretty small inside. Now, how do I get to be a cocoon master? Maybe I'll ask someone. For some reason, he reminds me of Ash Ketchum a lot. I want to be a Pokemon master! All right. Who are you? I haven't seen you around here. Are you a rookie? Yup. Me? I'm Kahu. Pleased to meet you. Uh, I'm not too sure. I'm so pleased to meet you. Should I? As you can see, many of the beast hunters aren't no. exactly very friendly. Why not? Did I say something wrong? Yes. Why should I trust you? If you want a good scoop, keep coming back to ask. So yeah. Um, these good. These are beast hunters. Uh, they'll obviously will be talking to a lot of them as we go through our journey. They have different masks depending on the type of beast they use. There's a bunch of different types of monsters we can get, and uh, there's it's kind of their masks kind of indicate which ones they use. So this one's an Alco one, the other one's an Og trainer, so on and so forth. You'll see as we go. Cocoon master, a 
Super Cocoon Master? Yeah, basically Beast Hunters are the new term like for it. Super Hyper Cocoon. Super Hyper Cocoon Master, because Cocoon Masters were kind of JQ1, in this one they're called Beast Hunters. Whatever. But we need to get ourselves a driver's license! Well, okay, no, it's a license to erase monsters, but, uh... Well, that, he pretty much tells us where to go, so we can do that in a second. This is the lounge, by the way. Um, we're gonna be going here later on in the game to get side quests from the machine next to the left of us there. Uh, the bulletin board, and... They don't play a major role, they're mostly for gaining a stat called Reputation, and also you can get some pretty interesting rewards. Um, it's kind of stuff we can just easily do while we go through the main story, so you'll see how it works later on. But um, it is, it's, it's one of the many ways to get Reputation, which is going to be in a very important stat. Um, I guess I won't really get a chance to explain this episode, so I'll just say right now, Reputation is mostly used in order to get more monsters on your team. You'll see as you, we go. The first couple episodes will be a lot of tutorial, I think, like, after we get through that hump, the way the game works will make more sense. It's easier to show than to tell. So, this guy, I kind of talked over his voice. He kind of... I like these little penguins. This sounds silly. Cocoon masters do part-time jobs? Hey, talk. What's a cocoon master? Uh, you mean a beast hunter? Yeah, they all have silly voices. A beast hunter? Okay, we don't... Do we, we need to... Uh, they're a volunteer group that... So here's what a beast hunter is. There we go. Good explanation. So they are cocoon masters, right? Magic users who handled the Apparently, beasts. Kai who lives in Jake Cocoon 1 when they were called that. So, they're called Beast Hunters now, whatever. So we need to get ourselves a license is the most important part. We can't actually access the bulletin board till we have the, or most, most of anything till we have a license, just so you know. So, we need ourselves a license. That's fine. So, let's just go ahead and I can explain some of these things a little bit before I go there. Uh, Throne Room is obviously the main hub, so we can go there in a little bit. Uh, Room of Life is where we're going to be managing our monsters once we start getting them. Arena is mostly for advancement tests, which is what we need the reputation for in order to get a better, a better amulet, basically, and get more monsters. We'll go... We'll, you'll see. And this is where we go to shop. So, uh, I could quickly show off the shop, I guess. Why not? I can just go ahead and demonstrate the shop before we get anywhere. So, this guy! Fat Penguin guy. Are you a rookie? Where are you from? I like this guy, he's kinda cool. Huh? I don't quite get what you mean, but I wanna be a cocoon master. I wanna be a Pokemon master! Dance, boy. But even you can make it big as a beast hunter. Well, we'll see if we can. So basically this guy runs a shop that uh, supports the beast hunters. Well, we do charge a little, but our prices are reasonable. Reasonable. So uh, over here will be a shop basically that we can uh, buy stuff later on. I just go ahead and show this off so I don't have to explain it later, I guess. But we can't do anything until we get our license as usual. So it's gonna take a while actually before we even get our license, unfortunately. And this guy will also be a place where we can store items, which is important because if you die in the forest, you will lose half your items. No, not the puzzle game where you push blocks around. This voice acting is so funny. He says really, really a lot. I love the guy. He's so, he's so ridiculous. Anyway, I'll show off. I'll be showing these two off in the uh, next episode or two. So let's just go ahead. We're going to the throne room and progress with the plot. Seems like a good plan. Like I said, this first episode is going to be a lot of texty, texty, text, text. What's well, up? This place is a lot smaller than I thought. I, I guess. Son, first time here. This is Levant. I think he's supposed to be actually the. Uh, the grown-up version of the main character from the first game, actually. So, uh, it's kind of cool how he's in this game. But, uh, he, he's, a, he's a pretty awesome guy. He's also in charge of the temple and the head of the Beast Hunters, basically. He's also really power- we'll, we'll, we'll learn more about him in the text. Yep, that he is! Who says I am legendary? He's also pretty humble. As you see, I am quite alive. And also, yeah, he is kind of alive. Since then, so I guess he can only be I a legend if you die? I don't know. Lived. And also, he's lived a very long time. Uh, apparently, his powers have allowed him to become pretty much immortal. Which is pretty crazy, but, uh... Talky talk talk exposition. Sure! More exposition! The legendary Kaku Master has got to be an old man. So the Chosen Ones don't die? Apparently! Or can't die is more like it. He's gonna explain Commune that. Yeah, god, he basically has a dragon god in his body, so god he's pretty powerful, I would imagine. Protecting the seal of the temple for eternity. 
That is my duty. Kind of sounds like a very long time to be working. There's so many cocoon masters. He keeps Come calling on, them cocoon can't masters. You just get them by yourself. The divine beasts in the wormhole have spawned awful mutants. So yeah, we're getting to like the, the whole people evil people in the uh, the, forbidden the forbidden seas of the forest have uh, the apparently begun to, and adapted to the basically evil in the forest. We have to stop it. We call so. Call it. Kalma, basically, are going to be our major foes here. Kalma, and he cannot handle him by himself. So if a dragon god can't handle him by himself, well, they must be pretty... Yeah, they must be pretty powerful, Kahu. Jeez. So, yeah, they will be our foes throughout this project. Uh, we'll be fighting plenty of them. It's kind of interesting how Kalma end up working in terms of the whole, like system of monster raising this game you'll dad, see how it goes uh basically it's kind of a cycle of when we just when we kill common in the forest if we'll see you'll see how it works um we'll actually be able to get new moves from them to teach to our beasts it's kind of interesting also a very cliche uh father sort of moment he's he's here for a strong father to become strong yay Yes, you've mentioned this a few times, Kahu. Please Very please sort of cliche, I guess, protagonist, but I like him anyway. Take it. A present? I like presents! Oh my god, we're, our arm is on fire, well, on light. And we get ourselves a cool little amulet thing. So, that'll be our, uh, that's our little way to fight, uh, with monsters, basically. It's pretty awesome, so... Divine beast can be talky, talky, talk, talk. the way of divine beasts. So yeah, I guess this is kind of like how it departs from Jake Kun 1. Maybe. I don't like I said, I haven't played Jake Kun 1, so I don't really know the details of that. Yay, we get to learn how to walk! No That's exciting. I will not force you. No, no, we'll do your crazy Many tutorials because it's a less play and I have to. Actually, I'm not even sure if you can skip it or not. So, we'll do it! I can't you stand hard work! Way. Come on, Kahu, no work, no play. You go in from there. So yep, Push we have to go into the glowing red gate of creepiness. Go. Come, try it. That we will. So, glowing red gate of creepiness. Uh, this one over here, by the way, this will come into play later. We can't actually do anything here, right? Actually, do, talk over here. Can I go in here? Say something. That's the Kaya Gate. Said to be where the chosen one of darkness trains. So yeah, it is sealed by the Nagi way of divine it's a beasts. Sealed area, no but way. it will be relevant at some point. But not today. Today we go into the this one, and we go into our training area to get a little bit of a. We're, we're gonna go through some basic tutorial stuff. Uh, these first couple episodes are probably gonna run a bit long, just because I want to get the tutorial stuff out of the way in the first couple episodes. But uh. We'll get to the good stuff soon enough. These weird plants all over. Yeah, don't say! This Although, those are some pretty weird plants. Time, the wormhole forest. Hey, we have radio! The divine beasts have a habit of making nests in the plants called ogre vine. Okay. Once in the forest, first look for the nests of the divine beasts. So yeah, basically, well, I'll, I'll talk beasts. when they're done. Ogre vine? What's that? Are they big? Yeah, the I would call that pretty big, a pulsing, and slightly gross. It's a big plant that gives off light and vibrates. Go find it. If you get lost, push the beast amulet's triangle button and call me. So yeah, triangle button will normally uh, bring up the menu. For now, it's just gonna be a way to contact him. But uh, R1, L1 moves your camera. By the way, other than that, move around. Um, these are gonna, this is gonna be how basically most levels are going to go. Where we're going to be walking around an area like this of different pathways, seeking out a bunch of these ogre vines, which will have items and comma and all sorts of craziness in them. And eventually, one of them, one of them, blah, 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 can't talk apparently. One of them will have the key to leaving the area through this thing called the Princess That's Vine, princess which is sort of the exit of the area. Use the key spores to open the bug and go in. But we don't have the to key spores. The bug, you must first find the ogre vine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ogre vine's a big plant that gives off light and vibrates. Yeah, I, I saw it already. We don't need you don't need to explain it again. So uh, basically, so like each section of a game, the game will have like d several levels of this. Where you have to find the keys in one of these things and bring them to the exit, rinse and repeat a lot. But we'll be battling monsters along the way, and there'll be plot and stuff, and you'll see how it goes. I like the way it's set up, it's pretty cool, but more wow, exposition! This is huge! Could this be it? Levant, 
Is this it? No, it's the other big yes. giant pulsing plant. That is an ochre vine. The divine beasts make their nests in there. Now, go on in. There are no divine beasts in this forest, so don't worry. Yeah, that'd be kind of bad because we don't actually have a monster to defend ourselves with. But we'll actually be getting one rather soon. In fact, you can kind of see over there, cool. looks like an egg of sorts. Hmm. It's alive. Well, it is pulsing and stuff. We're in the male stalk of the wormhole plant. Um. Male? Sounds kind of dirty. Is there a female one too? Exactly. A male stalk is an ogre vine. A female stalk is a princess vine. Princess Vines! So that's the pretty much the name of the exit. How about it? Are you uh, more exposition? Sure. May as well. Come in pairs that make islands in the wormhole space. The male ogre vine bears spores that fertilize the female. The female princess vine receives spores from the male and bears children in the wormhole space. The children create new islands in the wormhole space and thus multiply. The kind of a little confusing, but all you really need to know from this is that you take a thing from the male ogre vine, you put in the female ogre vine and your princess vine, and you get to go to new places, because apparently the princess vine roots are wormholes. Plot! Lore! Craziness! So, what do I do now? You sometimes find gems and herbs dropped by the divine beasts in here. So yeah, you'll find all sorts of different stuff in these ogre vines, but one of them will have the key so sure the next area. Them up. So, so go ahead most levels will have multiple, multiple ogre vines, you'll see. So let's go ahead and search around this. We'll find ourselves an egg! I got it! Huh? What's this? Some sort of weird egg? And that will actually be our That's first divine beast, beast our starter egg. one, which is kind of cool. The eggs you pick up are hatched in the temple. Yay! We can get ourselves a buddy. I've never seen one. So divine beasts are hatched from eggs. Sure, we'll go okay. with that. I'm gonna get lots of eggs and raise divine beasts. And make an omelet. Finding eggs is merely one means of boosting your fighting power. Our object as beast hunters is to purify dark divine beasts called Kalma. Kalma is going to be the main way, way we actually power up. Levels, so we can purify even more Kalma. To advance to the next level, you need the key. Look over there. There's our key. But I want to go talk to Some Mr. Pregnant Guy. Balls came out. <laughs> Some strange balls came out. Spores. They open the buds on the princess vines as exits. In short. They are like keys to the next level. Ha! Get it? Key spores? Get it? Key spores? Stamens. Remember this. See, so yeah, like I said, the one of these ogre vines will always have a key, key to the next area. Get... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Enough of you. Hi! Talk to me! If an explanation point appears, it means there's an item around. To pick up an item, press the X button. Did I mention I love the voice acting in this game? I really do. I really do. Okay, there is a key spore. Let's pick it up! Now what do I do? This is where it's a little now, gross. Let's it. just eat it! Back, just swallow it. Eat the whole- this, this is sort of like this male-female reprodu plant, plant reproduction process and you're eating their spores and- odors that stimulate the princess I need an adult! Stimulated by odors, the princess vine buds open. That's how it works. So basically, if you smell good, Ew. the women will open up for this you. Looks pretty weird. Just I'm not gonna touch that thing of- I'm, okay. I'm not touching that statement. We'll just, let's just pretend that never happened. So, we om nom nom this thing and then we huh? become smelly and... Hey, something smells sweet. And my Your blinds are rattling. <laughs> I'm, I got totally distracted by the fact my window just rattled. Apparently it's kind of windy out right now. Right about now, the princess vine bud should be opening. So yeah, now, we uh, now, now smell of ogre vine. vine so we can access the princess vine. Basically though, you can basically just bring that whole statement down, all that lore down to get key, open door. That's pretty much what it is. It was like a five minute explanation for get key. Really? See it sparkling. Yes, it's pretty obvious, Levant. Come on, we're not well I guess we are kind of ten. You can go through here. Oh however old we are. Island. Probably not ten. But still, you don't need to treat us like we're a child. We're not stupid. Anyway, let's head to the next area. Because we can Although, looking at the time, I'm already it's already twenty minutes in because of all this crazy lore. But in between levels, as you can see there's three different levels in this section of the game. Um, in between levels, though, there will be... Uh, you, you can get, you can save the game. Is actually really all you can do. So, <laughs> there's that. But you have to complete, like, 
each section you have to complete all of them at once, else if you leave the temple, you'll have to start from the beginning. Speaking of leaving the temple, we're gonna have to do that right now. You went through the wormhole tunnel in the princess vine and jumped to the next island. So yeah, we're on island two. Each section is made up of different islands. Into the wormhole forest. So you'll see how it goes, it's pretty obvious. Beast hunter tips! Who cares? I'll show you how to return to the temple. So yeah, press we're gonna be forced to return to the temple now at this point. Amulet to display a menu. So the you menu press triangle. Return to temple command. Pretty cool. Set to get out of the forest whenever you want. Once you're back at the temple, you've passed walking through the wormhole forest. Yay! I've learned how to walk! Yay! So, if you access triangle, you can access your menu. Uh, you have items which you can use. All we have is the egg so far. You get some tips and figures and medals. We'll go about those later when those are important. Formation will be uh, adjusting the formation of our divine beast. As you can see, you get eight slots, so we'll have up to eight beasts. And the way the battle system works, um, I'm, I don't really have time to explain it now, but something we'll definitely be exploring next episode. It's really cool. It involves like your different formations and using different sides of this amulet. It's pretty cool. You'll see as we go. Uh, status just checks the status of your divine beast. Options are your typical options. And we go back to the temple. However, the thing is, if you try to leave, if you try to do anything else, like move at all, Levon's gonna be like, hey, don't stop. You know how to do it. Pressing the triangle button. On yes, 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 you told us this. I don't care. So let's head back to the uh, the temple now. So let's head back. And basically, I'm gonna end this episode after I'm gonna go ahead and uh, use this opportunity to hatch my new monster, and then we'll be ending the episode at that point. So RPGs, long episodes. I would expect long episodes for this Looks project. Like you made it back, okay? Now you can learn how to use Divine Beasts. Yay! Although we're not going to really be able to do yes. much of that yet. So now I can finally start raising Divine Beasts. We get monsters! You're on your own for a while. Try talking to lots of different people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Press the button on top of the transporter. Then pick where you want to go. Okay, we've already done this before. Go to Shut Kikinac up. And company for information yes, yes, we already explored the items. The shrine Maiden in the Room of Life will tell you about hatching eggs. That's where we're going to go next. After hatching your eggs, go to the arena to learn about battle formation. The arena we're going to be doing next episode, because we're kind of okay, running low on time for this one. By not being an idiot! First, I gotta go hatch the egg I just picked up. Yes, yes, Kahu, that's what we need to do. Fine. Let's meet back here once your arena training is finished. Yeah, yeah. So, basically, uh, we need to go finish our train, or we need to go, uh, Hatch our egg, and then we'll finish our arena training. Well, we'll do our arena training next episode. But let's go hatch an egg, because we can do that, and it's pretty cool. So this is the Shrine Maiden. She's going to be in charge of our eggs. I got a divine beast egg. What do I do now? Well, we hatch it, Kahu. It's pretty Maybe. obvious. Shall we hatch the egg? That we should do. Let's go ahead, and uh, take, so talking to her will bring us to a menu where we can hatch eggs and also merge divine beasts. That's something, well, I guess I can kind of give a brief explanation. Basically, what happen, what you're going to be doing in this game, you'll be training your beasts, they'll gain levels by fighting, once they reach level 15, you can then merge them with one of the comma you find in the forest, in order to give said divine beast, uh, re it resets them back to level 1, and it gives them, but it gives them a new move and other new passive abilities as well. It's pretty cool, we'll see how, it, like I said, this will be like a show, not tell sort of thing, but I'm giving like a brief overview, just in case. So we'll go ahead and hash the egg, a Tematosh! Ta, whatever the hell you want to pronounce it, I don't even know. But we're gonna go ahead and hatch our first Divine Beast right now because it'll be awesome. So you get this little, you get this little cool little cutscene where uh, it hatches, and we will get our first little critter. Look at him, he's so adorable! I like this little guy. The stutter one's really cool. Um, the only issue I have with it is the fact that you can also serve toggles, so we don't have anything special, unfortunately. Uh, sometimes you'll actually start with special abilities, but not yet. And that's okay. So let's go ahead and name it. I'm going to be naming all the Divine Beasts. You can also give it random names like Asterix or Atlantic or Akira or Penny. But uh, I'm going to name them after, you know, El Pure friends of mine. Or just friends of mine that have been in my videos and or, you know, just, just people I've, I'm friends with. Obviously, Tamal will be the first one. So Tamal is going to be our starter. I mean, did you expect anything less, really? So we will have a uh, adorable little Tamal. He's going to go on the fire side. I can't. I'm not really going to get into the uh, 
logistics of battles quite yet, but basically there's four different sides and uh, they play a big role in which, you know, where you place the beasts are very important in terms of, in terms of like, how things end up going. That's what we're going to explain next time is how battles work. I wish I could have fit in this episode, but we're already at 25 minutes and that's kind of ridiculous. So, uh, we have ourselves a new monster. We already gave it a good name. I guess before the episode, just two things. This guy over here will show um, all the different comma you have, so he's kind of a good database for that. He's kind of the Pokédex, I guess. But uh, we don't have any, so I don't really care. And this guy over here will change names. He's the name changer. I love the voice acting. So yeah, we're not going to deal with that either. But, basically, I'm going to end the episode here, because we're already 26 minutes in, and... Uh, we don't need to make it run longer than that. So, in the next episode, guys, we're going to head to the arena, get our basic training, and hopefully finish up the uh, sort of tutorial section of the game. That's my goal. So, this is Lucky70x, signing out. I will see you guys in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, this game will pick up soon, and we we'll, can really get into the nitty-gritty of Jacob Kuhn 2. I love this game, and I hope you guys will, too. So, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.